so my connection with Sarah is that um, I, I've been uh, going and watching her uh, put the show together and go and visit the studio. So I've seen the work outside the studio um, at this exhibition, and I've seen it in a tiny little studio where it was made. So it, it, it's this is the first time going to the exhibition that I've seen the thing in you know its fullness. Mm. Um, it's <clears throat> it's actually really ambitious show, I think. Um, it's because it's a really considerable space and there's a lot to fill there. I don't I don't think I'd be able to do that myself. Not at the moment. Um, so it, because there's so much stuff, it's got a sort of a feel um, of, a, of a retrospective about it. But I, I don't think it's just mm. retrospective. Obviously, mm. there's the past and what you've done before. Um, and there's stuff that you probably, you know, that you've got there you think might have the future embodied in it. Um, so as I look around it, I'm thinking, well, I can see at least four or five different kind of mm. types of work in this. So there's the, the the first thing that I can see is the um, the photographs um, set next to the, the drawings of the little paintings, um, which I understand the moon moonscapes. Mm. And yeah. then we've got the square paintings with the horizontal baby lines that I understand are made in gesso and Oak Gold Link. Oak Gold yeah. Link, yeah. And then we've got these ones that are on the screen at the moment, these dyed pieces, these big dyed pieces that are hung and um, seem to present, you know, uh, something that's an object with the back and the front. And then we've got um, the room full of uh, three-dimensional objects. Mm, the cutouts. Or, whether they're sculptures or what they're, whether they're three-dimensional paintings or how you feel about them and what that's about. Maybe that's something you could go into. And then, of course, the other thing is um, there are some things that look like clothes, sculptures that look like yeah. clothes. So um, the, that's five, isn't it? I mean, there are five things. So um, could, you, could we use that, those things... Uh, all those different things to work out some sort of timeline and perhaps mm -hmm. work out how, what what led to what you know how that was how that came about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so there's like you say there's sort of five sections, four or five, and um, the whole show covers about five years worth of work. Um, and I mean it's five years, and then but each each part, each component of the show has got a different sense of time engendered in it. Um, I'd say that that a lot of the work happened almost simultaneously. It just depended on what kind of time I had or how long that piece took. So in terms of the timeline and when this work started, it was um, it started with uh, the the diptychs and collages of um, of the works on paper with um what I call moon drawings, and they're those are those the photographic yeah, pieces black next and, to yeah. black and white. Have you have you got those, John? Those photographic pieces. <laughs> the black they've got black and white photographs with um, sort of collaged works on paper, and the photographs are in that room. Yeah, what I call moon drawings. Those. Yeah, and those those one those two big ones are two panels. So. Um, ink and gesso on panel with the photos, and then they're called moon drawings because I've. Um, it was the end of 2017, and um, I'd actually started taking photos before then, about 2011. But I hadn't. It was in 2017 I started piecing them together, um, and I'd go out. I lived in this woodland that's been mentioned before, and. Um, I would go out on a full moon and walk my dog at night and I'd take photos of the moon with a long exposure and make drawings. And what I found really interesting was that they um, they often look like charcoal or pen or brush, depending on the speed of and the exposure of the, the photo. Um, so 
I mean, there's the time, there's the time that work takes. There's the time this kind of full moon ritual, and um, <clears throat> and it's kind of taken this long to work out what to do, how to put it together. And then there's there's so that kind of this is that's where this project started, uh, the the exhibition really where the work starts. Um, and then when the, I've been making oak gold ink for a while since living in the woods. But when the pandemic started and we had lockdown, um, I we had some ducks and I started dyeing at Easter, dyeing eggs with plant materials with my children. And um, it's from there, the colours, I thought, well, I could, I could maybe dye the canvas. I'd already started doing unstretched canvases, using the oak gall ink and painting with that on the canvas. But I just, I realised I could actually dye the cloth and then paint on it. So rather than have, you know, a ground of the background, the colour, um, I could actually have it in the material. Um, so those those ones are in the centre of the space. The yeah, the hanging. Thing. Yeah. What about those ones that are still on the in the square format that are yeah. painted on the wall? Where do they fit in? Are they an intermediate thing or are they, is it all so, occurring all over yeah, the place? So different? The, the dyed pieces can take quite a long time. Yeah. I and mean, it can take from three days to a year um, to dye it. Um, so while that's happening, I'll be making something else. I might be making the big panel paintings or the works on paper. Okay. Um, Why did it take so long? Um, it's partly, um, I mean, the process of dyeing is three processes to get to the colour. And then I would, I've got this cast iron bath and I um, would light a fire under it and I can dye five, six metres of cloth. So the dye... The, the things that you use to make the dye with, mm. these are things you've foraged or have you grown oh, yeah. them? Have you grown yeah. those? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> so I've, I've foraged and I've got into growing. So that's part of the time process as so well. So you've got to wait for something to grow yeah. before you can yeah. harvest it to make yeah. the dye. Is that what you're saying? So it starts from seed. It might take a year or a year and a half to then harvest the plant material, yeah. whether it's flowers or roots or leaves, yeah. and then I can use it to dye yeah. And then it might take, I might leave it in this dye bath for a week. All right, um, yeah. There's one in the hanging the hanging piece that's um, brown with black marks on it. And that... Um, They're the ones that looks like charcoal marks. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So that's uh, chestnut. Okay. Um, chestnut shavings. And I did a cold dye and I just put it in a big a bin, a plastic bin with a lid. And I chucked it in and I left it there for a few weeks. And I, keep, I take it out, have a look, stir it around, put it back in, and then it'd be a few months. And it took, in the end, it was in there over a year, nice. and the texture would develop okay. yeah. And, yeah. Um, until I took it out. And, and so there's that kind of abandoning it and letting it. Do you think that kind of allows you to dissociate with it so it's, it's doing its own thing, so you're not like overpowering it with your... Yeah, maybe. And then I'm working on another colour in the bath. This was in the bin. And it, you know, let it do its own thing. Yeah. Um, but that time is is still in it. I haven't just done it. It's not the same as if I've done it really quickly. Right. It's, I think that time counts for something. And not just in how the marks get further into it, but, but um, you know, things happen in that time. Yeah. So that's going on. You know, the dying was going on for, and the growing, it's been going on for t two or th three years. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I started, I could, I could dye it, dry it, roll it up and do another one, paint on it. Yeah. I mean, when I got to about 15, um, I thought, well, maybe they could be hung together. Right. They weren't conceived as that to start with. Um, and in fact, I borrowed a studio at Elysium because it had a higher ceiling and, mm. and um, hung, just tried hanging them to see if it might work as an idea and then and carried on. And the thing is, I, you know, I can touch the roof. I can touch the ceiling of my studio. So I haven't actually seen this piece um, and its potential. So to get into the gallery and, you know, every space has got different problems, hasn't it? Um, and to get in there and... You got, I went in with an idea, and then the idea kind of changes depending on 
how it's going up and what's going on. And, you know, the gallery's got a sloping ceiling and it's got a platform and a pole. And um, I had thought it would be something more, I mean, I wanted people to be able to get into it, get into the painting. Um, I thought it would have more edges, but it, it's kind of ended up open at one end. Um, so you can still weave through and get body to body with it. Um, and that's another sense of time, is the viewer walking through. So it, there's a kind of, there's lots of different senses of well, there's time. there's lots of different works depending on where you stand within it as yeah, well, aren't there? Yeah, different viewpoints. And who's standing behind it and whether the lights are on or off yeah. and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then with the, the more square format, it's an off square, um, and then the works on paper that go with, with that. I, if I think about the paintings I was doing, um, I kind of tipped that completely on its side. They were very layered oil paintings, very up and down. They're not in this show. They're not in this. No. That's okay. kind of the past 20 years before this. And, and um, with these, I wanted to really hold back and not um, just keep painting and hold back and kind of wait to know what to do next or wait or have not overpaint it, I suppose, and to let the luminosity come through, um, to, to let the, the support be part of it, part of that colour experience. Um, well, the thing is that with the painting, the, the paintings on gesso, a gesso is a ground that you paint on, mm. so you're putting this paint onto the gesso. But these things in the middle of the room, the colours right the way through them, isn't yeah. it? So it's actually it's permeated them. Mm. What about these sculptures, though? Because the colour doesn't permeate yeah. them, does it? Yeah, so they they're... think they fit in? Well, they, I mean, they're kind of moving on from the panel paintings, in a way, Um I'm not sure I've really finished. Are they, they contemporary with the dyed pieces? Well, the I'd say that all of the marks tie in with each other. There's yeah. concentric circles, there's lines. and. But actual um, time when you made them, did you make them at the same time? I was, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think the idea came before the hanging, the unstretched canvases. So this um, idea of a linear thing that I parked on about at the beginning is mm -hmm. just the bogus thing, really. It's, it's it's just it's all happening right okay yeah so okay. it depends you know and I've got two children so it depends what kind of time I have and it's quite handy though to try and sort of get things rolling in it I mean uh, so what you know those sculptures that they were going on at the same time mm -hmm. yeah um we might as well talk about them now as well then so what what do they what what where did they come from so they um. <clears throat> They came before the, the unstretched canvases. Okay. Um, and I was, I was just kind of fiddling about my studio, and I had a box. You know how you get packaging, and it separates bottles, yeah. and it slots together. Yeah. And I saw one of them. It was just for small bottles, and I was looking at it, and I was thinking, well, I could do that with paintings and slot them together and cut them out. And I made a, made some little cardboard maquettes. Yeah. And just tried them out and I made thin plywood maquettes and I made a little gallery and I had cutouts going up the wall and um and played with that a bit and I just I wondered if it might work bigger. I mean I think it's got lots of problems, but it's what's really great about Elysium Gallery is how it's a really experimental space. Right. Uh... Um and you can try things out and you know, I'm really lucky. I've got all the whole space, and there's, each one is very different. Um, I mean, it's a diff. It's it's interesting because it's a different way of colliding the drawing, isn't it? Mm. So you've got one set of circles, and then you can you've got this sculpture kit or this kit that you can so you can arrange them and move them about in different in different ways. So, what when you say there are problems, what would you identify as a problem? Do you think? I mean, because it's open ended work. Yeah. And, I mean, I. I agree with you, but I think that there's a, there's a lot of potential in them. And I think John said to me he thought that they had legs. Yeah. I mean, I don't want 
necessarily want things to be finished. Um, and if something's finished, then that's the end. And yeah. it becomes kind of, becomes a bit dull, perhaps if you know everything about something. Um, oh, there's a tractor just passing, just for a bit of authenticity. Let the tractor pass. So, um, I mean, I think there's more to be played with, really. Uh, yeah. And a bit more time. I mean, I you know, I really with that piece, I really struggled in my studio. Yeah. I haven't got enough space. It was yeah. perhaps a bit ambitious with the scale of it. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of bumping walls and um, the the scale of the materials to the work. Um, being able what to do you mean like the thickness. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, would you what would you would you use another something of maybe using something different, a different material or? I mean, maybe somewhere in between, something more flexible. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wonder as well, but the other thing about them is that they're not absorbent services. They're, they're a bit like mm -hmm. those those square paintings, that, that yeah. gessoed surface that you put the paint on top. And that's where, where it started. Could, yeah, started yeah, with, yeah. With panels and of boards course. and then just like these cardboard packaging, yeah. just slotting it together. And yeah. um, So I was kind of coming from, I was coming from painting and thinking about, a 3D painting, although it's still very flat and rigid, um, and not necessarily thinking about it being sculpture, although perhaps no. it goes into that territory. Um, but it, and like the moon drawings with the collages, it, I'd make the photographs and chop them up, and I'd have unfinished paintings or areas of, you know, works on paper that I would also chop up, and I'd have all these pieces of paper and you can not worry about it, can you? You can play. Mm -hmm. um, the cutouts were sort of, I mean, I'm trying to bring in a playful element to all of it, really. Um, so the cutouts, the shapes of those, um, when I lived in the woodland, you're always looking for the lights. And in, in winter, you get the most light because the leaves have gone. Um, in summer, it's dark and damp and green and you're kind of seeking the light because it, that's what you need. And um, even the holly leaves have a reflection. So this light there is once you start looking, seeing where the light is. And the um, these shapes of the 3D cutouts, they are the negative spaces between the trees. Right. So it was a starting point. Um, I'm wondering, like, I'm not wanting to you know, illustrate the trees or make a picture of them by... You, almost, you could almost draw them with the cutout shapes and create an image, a non-image. Um, it was just to use those shapes and play with them and take another part of the woodland and see what I could do with it. The time and process has kind of removed you from them and turned them into something new and yeah. a transformative process. And, they're, you know, they're white and... Um, it, yeah, it's kind of coming from the panel and seeing if I just, you know, chopped it up and slotted it together. And it's, it's yeah, playing with that. <clears throat> um, Where do you think you'd go then from here with the, sh with the work? That you, um, you're just too knackered to think yeah. about that. Now. Well, just like I mean, those. literally the next step <laughs> is to build a studio. Right, so um, that's the good practical mine's gotta thing, be, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mine's got to be knocked down. Because it is small. Even yeah. I can touch the sea yeah. and then I'm old. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I want uh, to make some... You know, I'm a painter. I want to make some paintings, some big paintings um, that are more me size, not just my width, but height as well, and yeah. not be kind of knocking on the ceiling and the walls. Um, so it's, it's, it's building that. Um, I think the hanging canvas one, I think that has got so much potential as well. It's got different configurations. I could hang them all on just two bars. Well, you can't do this show again, can you? <laughs> it's got to be different somewhat, yeah. unless you were like really pedantic and slightly yeah. crazy. I wouldn't want to. No, no, no. no I I think think, yeah. yeah. That's what... Um, that's what's quite nice about it is all those pieces could be completely in a completely different configuration and maybe they would be all hung together in more of a um an object which is how i thought it would be but one that you can enter mm. um or maybe they could be 
hung on. Like there's there are two where there are lots looped over and yeah. layered, and I really like those. I like um, the, the what, those ones that are thrown over. Yeah. I, what I like about those is there's a kind of arbitrary thing about them. A bit like when you put the stuff in the bath, you don't quite know what you're going to get. It's mm. almost like you're continuing that kind of, <clears throat> um, you're allowing chance um, in later in the game. Where these, the, the ones on the wall look very much like paintings in a gallery. Mm. And I like, you know, I like them. I understand it's within that, that rectangle. I, quite, I kind of I quite respond to that just throwing something over it's like a saddle that um, that piece of string well, built of them, wood you know and, uh, some of them are hidden yeah in part, and it builds up a mass doesn't it there's a yeah. bulk to it yeah yeah. But just going back to time again um, the panel paintings <clears throat> and <clears throat> what's on paper you, well the panels actually you can see the time that's gone into it you can see the layers there's nothing hidden and there's some underneath and some on top and some of it gets pulled through. Um, so you can see time in that one. And I mm. quite like that. Yeah. Um, and I, I kind of think of them as portals. Not that you're stepping through a window so much, but that you can become the next... Um, become the next next not stepping into the next world but become another one does that make any sense um, I don't um know. what do you mean because of you're the move you're the movable yeah element so rather than walking through it or staying on the outside i there's um i think i suppose it comes from i started a meditation practice about two years ago okay yeah and um, it's about, you know, if you can get out of your body and into another field, into the quantum field, essentially, and you can have um, mystical experiences, you can have, you can see other worlds. And people, are, you know, they use psychotropic drugs to mm. achieve that, but you can do it with meditation. Mm. And so for me, these are kind of portal um, the, where you can enter another realm or another state. In fact, there was I was um, reading about um, came up across this term. Some of the small pieces are called oceanic states, right. and what was his name? Um, Romain Rolland wrote to Freud, right. and um, he coined the term oceanic feeling. And I found the term. Oceanic states in Jennifer Hickey's latest book, and um, the other side about women artists it's just come out. Women artists um, painting and making um, work about the spirit world and other realms and experiences. And I saw this <clears throat> the phrase oceanic state, and um, <clears throat> so I've named some of them that, and some of them are called portal, um, and it relates to that and a change of state. Um, or the potential for that. Mm. Mm. So, um, I mean, for me, because it all happens simultaneously, or uh, almost, it all, it all, um, they relate to each other. Different parts. Have you read Mirandi's little book, The, the Real and the Real? No. Or maybe you should. Yeah. It's a theosophically, you know, rooted thing, but it's quite interesting. It's about painting. And In fact, I've got a nice, um, I think, a nice quote from Ian, Ian McKeever. He's a painter, yeah. and I like his paintings, and I also really like how he writes about painting yeah. and abstract painting. Um, and he writes in a way that it all makes sense to me. Um so he says that this is about his work. He says, I'm trying to get to some psychological, emotional state that nevertheless has an object hook to it, has a sense of form to it, which can imply something solid. Yeah. Um, and he says of Hilma Afklint, how her own thinking could manifest itself in painting. So rather than painting a thing, an object, a, 
You're making it illusionistic. It's trying to paint another sense. So it's a sense of that potential or that portal. Yeah, these square ones or off squares. So that's pretty esoteric stuff. What about yes, these yeah, clothes? Yes, yeah, skirts, right, yeah. My favourite bit about them are the lining of the pockets. Yeah, it's so just, they're highly finished. Because it's very neat and it's yeah. extremely clean and it's nothing like my pockets when I was a schoolboy. So they're in bamboo silk. It's all, I mean, all of the, all of the materials are um, carefully sourced there. Exactly. Which bits of bamboo silk? The so pocket, inside the pocket, the pockets, the pocket yeah. opening. And yeah. it's all kind of, the craft is there, it's beautifully finished, and then um, where, yeah. well, where I mean, there would be a zip, it's it's not there and it's frayed. Well, you see those those ones that with the, 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 the dyed pieces that are thrown over that piece of wood, they're kind of very open-ended, aren't they? So that they're about yeah. process and chance and... Um, time and forgetting the piece and then refinding it and re-establishing a connection with it and then re-showing it and all those sort of things. But with these, they're um, they're very crafted. I mean, uh, and it's, it's, it's that, can you, can you find that state that you're talking about mm. through that sort of intense concentration? Because, you know, when I'm making stuff and I'm concentrating on something that's really quite, you know, demanding, I lose myself with it, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, most artists do, don't they? And I think the craft part comes throughout most of it. There's, well, there's the dyeing process, there's the sewing with the clothes, the ink making, um, and it's, and growing, growing the dye colours. So I want, I mean, the reason I'm doing the whole process is I wanted to really connect to, to where it comes from. And it's got that's the part of the sustainable element of it. Like, where are these coming from? Are they safe? What's the end of life? And um, trying to consider a sustainable creative practice and how I could improve it and change it. So the the canvas is organic. The yeah. pockets that you like are organic bamboo. But, silk. but the difference between that, what you're talking about, mm -hmm. and what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. is one's knowledge mm -hmm. and the other's skill. Yeah, and I'm talking about what your hands learn before your head does. Mm. That's that's what I'm talking yeah. about. As as is is that a way into something? But for me, it is as an artist. You know, so when a musician becomes superbly adept to play an instrument, they find a kind of release and a reverie in what they can do. With um, a muscle memory, yeah, yeah. Than that, but more than that. Mm. Um, and and, and I, that, that's what I was saying. So all those things, they they they're like kind of, they seem to me quite they're knowledge based things, and I can understand mm -hmm. those, and I can see that they agglomerate and they become the work. But I was just interested. I, it's just my personal, yeah. you know. I'm looking at those pockets and I'm thinking, I really like that pocket lining. You know, I like the way it's folded and it's ironed, and I think it reminds me of a certain way that some people have with their to fold clothes beautifully. Mm. I've never had the skill. They just end up on the floor. But, you know, it's it. some people can do that, and there's a kind of poetry in that um, pressed, mm. pristine thing. I just wondered whether that was... The thing is, once I took the canvas off the stretcher and then I started dyeing it, and I had five, six metres of cloth, this cloth has, and it's on the washing line, I'm talking about craft, and then it's a domestic space of the washing line, and it's got potential. So some of it's become this piece that you can walk through, and it's painted on, and some of it, I've got a degree in fashion, yeah. and it just, I'm looking at this cloth, and it just seemed like I have ideas to turn it into clothes or to make something else from it. And yeah. so I just, I thought, well, let's make some clothes that, have the marks of the paintings and they all relate to each other and it comes from the same place it comes from the color that i'm growing and it's an it's another manifestation that this cloth can turn into um i mean you could take them all down and wrap them around you and everyone could be wearing one so 
That's lots of things, though, isn't it? All those different things, mm. and lots of different things yeah. that you could think about there. That, 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 that breaks down into, you know, the body and how things are fit around the body, the way mm. things are made. You know, so there, there are differences, I think. So I was just interested in that. I mean, it's not... Um, Did I answer your question? I think I did. Um, something else. It, I don't, it, do, it yeah. doesn't matter. It's just my observation, you know, uh, 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 trying to work out where they fit in it and what I liked about them. So it seems to me that in, in the same way as the things that are the sculptures, are sort of the things I like about them and I can see potential in them for me. If, I, if they were mine, mm -hmm. I'd think, oh, do but I'm just interested in where you were with it and what's what's the best it, it seems crass to say well what's the best thing but what's the most for you which do you think is you know where's but, it going yeah where's yeah. it going that's all yeah. Yeah, yeah you know I don't it's like I mean with the clothes I had a whole I've got a whole collection designed I've got coats with, yeah. and I've got half the patterns made yeah. but it just seemed unnecessary or too much too much, yeah, too much for this mm. show. But you put us a little taster in anyway. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. resist it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so when you would say, you know, as, as you were saying, things were jumping about in time and they all came up together in a mm. way. Mm. That, in a way, saying, "Well, I, I guess you've got to look at the whole lot of it and work out where it's going for yourself yeah. as, as, a, as a viewer." I think you think, "Well, maybe it's going." It was um, interesting at the opening, um, and different people um, distinctively liking different parts of it. You know, someone liked the big panel painting. Someone else liked the works on paper. <clears throat> someone else loved the moon drawings. Mm. Um, if you're running around trying to, I've, I've learned that my costume it just drives you mad, doesn't it? Mm. But it's over five years, so yeah, it, you know the work builds up and goes in its own direction, and because you know I'd have the I'd have the dye bath going, and I'd have my preschooler. She's at school now, and we'd do a bit together, and she'd stir it, and we'd leave it, and put some logs on the fire, and. And then when I had a studio day to myself, then I'd make um, paintings in the studio or paperwork. Um, so, and there'd just be constantly something happening or something on the washing line and well, or picking flowers. And, I was going to say at one point you were talking, you were thinking about maybe putting a dying bath in there and actually yeah. doing, making some stuff in the space, weren't you? The thing is, is the, um, <clears throat> what's exciting about the bath? A big part that activates it is the fire. Yeah. I mean, it's in the studio documentary, but that's that's um, that's a big part of it. It's not just hot water from the tap. It's like growing the plant colours. It, it's the whole, yeah, really engaged so. in the whole process. And to have it in the gallery, I thought it's there's, there's something missing. Um, yeah. Okay. Mm. And the the fire. Yeah, it activates it. There's something beautiful about it. There's the steam and the smoke, and and then look, you know, you lift the canvas out, and it's hot water and it's steaming. <laughs> it's amazing. It's exciting. It's fun to make. Yeah, I know. That. I think that's why we were discussing whether you were going to do it, but yeah. of course you can't do it with the heat. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, but of course it isn't your responsibility to entertain people, or is it? <laughs> yeah. We um with Elysium we had a I did a workshop, dying workshop at my studio and um everyone took part in yeah. in the fire and the bath and the dying, so at that point I mean I entertain people every six weeks, pouring bronze and all that sort of stuff. Mm. But I don't feel like I've got to do that with a, mm. with my art. Yeah. Um, well, it's part of the process, yeah, and it was part of teaching the process. Um, but yeah, it's a it, it's if there was an outdoor space, then it could work, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm.